All right, we have a special presentation by Maine Water Company as an update for where we are with the, uh, the, new, ring, uh, the new system that we have in place here. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Appreciate it. Um, and a reminder <clears throat> with, our, with our agreement with the town of Berwick, we, we had agreed to, to meeting twice a year. Uh, with the select board uh just a reminder we can always meet more we can always meet less and and we also don't need to wait for a select board meeting to share information so james i've appreciated the the uh the communication from you and um i will start out with if you go to the back of this operations report you'll notice there it says customer service and billing update with no text <laughs> so that means that i didn't print off the right copies so i i, I added that in today um i have that right here so i'll be able to provide the update and then I'll send the most recent copy um, to all of you. So starting is, uh, is just a general staffing. Um, Mickey Hall is here today. He is our superintendent of, for Biddeford Saco and, and the town of Berwick um, also uh, falls under his leadership. So uh, Mickey's been very involved in the Berwick uh, system uh, since we have be began to run it. Um, so th thanks, Mickey, for being here. Uh, Joe Dignam. Uh, who you know is the operator who came to us from York Water District um, and also while working for York uh, helped uh, the gap between your class four operator and us. Uh, he made the move to Maine Water. We're really, really excited to have him on board. He's a, he's a true professional. He's a class four operator. He knows water quality. <clears throat> on top of that, he's a, he's a great person to work with. So, um, and, and, and also, we've continued to, to have Mike Brown support us working through a staffing agency. He's brought a lot of coverage to us, so we, we certainly appreciate that. And also tonight, we have Dan Flagg um, from Wright Pierce, uh, your consulting engineer for the, for the project. We know Dan very well. We've worked with him for several years. Um, so we will we'll jump into the, the distribution system maintenance, which is essentially the pipes in the street, the valves, the hydrants. Uh, Mickey's team, uh, day one, day two, started going out into the system and doing hydrant w winterization, essentially making sure the hydrants are pumped out and they're not frozen. We did identify uh, quite a bit that were frozen, so we, we thawed them out. Uh, we did some standard maintenance to that, and we also put uh, six out of service. So four that we're waiting on hydrant parts for to put back together before they can be operable again, and two that need to be replaced. Uh, waiting for the pavement plants to open up and to, to get the hydrants in in place. Um, but that's that's part of the standard agreement. That's what we do is make sure that the that the hydrants work. Um, our engineering team has been on site and supporting the town of Berwick's water system um, and representing the town for the new development downtown, just just confirming that things are going into spec um, and and making sure that that what goes in is is done correctly. And then all the compliance um, Water quality sampling reporting. We we did finish the consumer confidence report, which is the annual required water quality report. It's on the Maine Water website under our, our water quality tab. Um, we recently uh, conducted a required sanitary survey with the Maine Drinking Water Program, which is a routine inspection that happens every two years or so. Um, we got very good feedback from the Drinking Water Program. They're, they're very comfortable with how we're running things. <coughs> They did note some minor deficiencies, which is, in those reports, is different than a major deficiency. It's not a violation, just some things to clean up. Um, so there, that went well. Um, now we'll go to our, our water treatment facility. As you know, in, in, in uh, late February, early March, we, we experienced some, 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 some challenges there, uh, specifically with the filters. So we experienced some um, reduced flow um, very reduced flow through filters one and two, and that really affected our ability to, to fill the one distribution tank in the, in the system. And the, the, the customers who experience the low pressure are the ones who are closest to the tank. Um, and at, while most of the town doesn't feel the full impact. Uh, so once we recognized that there was an issue, we pulled our team together, operations, water quality, engineering, our communications teams, and also engaged uh, Dan Flagg at Wright Pierce to, to carve out a quick path forward. Uh, we did in a, we sent the, a, uh, a, a blower out uh, um, for an emergency repair. Uh, we also issued immediately a conserve water advisory um, that I'm sure that you're aware of. And that's, we would do that in any system. It, it, it buys us time. Um, and it's, at the end of the day, it's the community's water system. So 
if there's an issue and, and there's a water quantity issue, we want to communicate that. Uh, and we continue to communicate updates throughout the process. We did find that a lot of the contact info that we had, it wasn't correct. So that, that gave us the opportunity when a customer called us to say, hey, I didn't get a call. Then we got their right contact info. And then they're on our next, our next message. Um, we, we talked to a lot of customers directly over the phone through customer service and, and Mickey Hall as well. Uh, and we identified that there were uh, clogging of filter drains and the clarifiers within the package unit due to the high levels of manganese over time. So uh, essentially they hadn't been maintained, they hadn't been cleaned, and it, 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 caught, up, it caught up to the filters. Um, so what ultimately it, it led to was uh, Dan Flagg helped us a lot, connected with Bath Water District, who is a client of Red Pierce's. They have, uh, they have essentially identical, um, an identical uh, setup, and they do a routine cleanings. So we walk through that procedure with them. But in the meantime, um, Mickey and Joe and Mike and brought in a local contractor to do some shoveling overnight, shoveled out media, um, took apart the under drains, uh, Wash them out the best that we could and put filter two back together by the morning and we had significant increase in flow and a, a couple days later that's when we were able to lift the advisory um, and then later down the road a few weeks later we were able to do the same for filter one for filter one and for filter two we've also done the cleanings um, that we learned about from Bath Water District and, and we're going to continue to do to do those uh, 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 periodically as a as a routine maintenance, um, which we've learned as we've learned this system is really a good idea when you have that level of manganese hitting the filters. Um, and what the board should be aware of is that there is a need uh, for a filter media replacement and an under drain replacement as well as some uh, air scour motor replacements and so we're working with Dan to figure out how we can pull that into the SRF project. Um, I do want to let let the board know that you know not doing that is it would be a would be a poor decision. It's really it's really in the best interest of the water system to to make sure that, that we make those investments. Uh, and, and on the operations side a, a really a big big thanks to Joe and Mickey and Mike who you know it was a 24 7 operation for two weeks. Um, so not a lot of sleep, a lot of dedication. So I, I, uh, I certainly can't stand up here and take that credit. That's the operations guys that, that made that happen. And then on the, uh, the customer service and billing update, the, the, the conversion of customer data to our systems, that, that was completed on time. Um, Lisa was great to work with, with the town of Berwick, a great communication. Um, and so a, 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 a billing update, the, we read the meters and the first bills were, were issued for all metered accounts on the 14th of April for the first quarter billings. There were 992 bills uh, sent out and it totaled about 107,000 in revenue. Um, fire protection bills were issued on 422 for a total of about 60 grand. We um, in, in our billing software, we separate the fire protection bills and the residential bills, which is different than the Berwick customers are used to, but we'll do that going forward. They'll get a fire protection bill for those who have a, who have a sprinkler and then a normal residential. Um, all customers now have the ability to access their accounts electronically through the Main Water website um, and can set up e-billing and pay electronically if they do prefer to do so. Um, <clears throat> The board should be aware that we did get a handful of calls around it seemed to be unusual water usage to what they were used to on their bill. Um, we, we did go out and, and check for leaks in homes and, and talk to customers. Uh, also though, we, we did find that, that, that there were some issues with the reads that happened back in January. Um, so we're, we're working with customers to clean some of that up and, and then our hope is that we wouldn't re repeat that same challenge once we have our read um, for in April and then our next reads for the next quarter, if, if that makes sense to the board. What do you think caused the irregularity? Was, were the readers <clears throat> just not read properly? Or? Uh, you know what, I, I honestly, it, it could very well be so, but I, I don't know that, but the, 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 some of the readings didn't make sense. So What percentage of customers are having this issue? Um, in, 
in talking to Pam Blackman, just a handful. It's not, it's not, yeah. not many. Limited. Limited. Not many. Limited. But um, j just a reminder, if, if you hear of anyone who has concerns or for anyone who is listening in, the best thing to do is to call our 1-800 number um, and, and we'll work with you to, to figure out exactly what's going on um, and make it right. And I, the, la the, last, the last part of the update is that we did, we did do all of the proper n notifications then for shutoffs for those who don't pay their bill there's a Telefox call that goes out, there's a letter that goes out, and then there's another t automatic Telefox call that goes out that says, you know, if you don't pay your bill, the water will be shut off. So we did go out and do a handful of shutoffs, but we, we've collected that revenue and turned the water back on. So um, I think for a, for a customer service revenue service uh, conversion, it, it, it really went rather well. There's going to be some small hiccups in in, in data that we take in and old reads that we take in, but we'll keep working on those. And that, that concludes the operations report, so I'll, I'll see if the, the board has any questions, and then I'll turn it over to Dan Flagg to walk through an update on the SRF project for the treatment facility. Yeah. Sounds pretty good. Okay. No questions on operations. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Oh, nice presentation, Mike. <laughs> Um, so I spoke to you, I'm Dan Flagg from Wright Pierce, I'm the consultant on the project, I've been working uh, with the town for, for several months as we've been uh, migrating towards, uh, building towards these upgrades and, and improving water quality for the town of Berwick. Um, so I wanted to update folks, I, I spoke to you uh, probably back in December um, when we were wrapping up the piloting that we were doing last fall with uh, Veolia. So we got their pilot report uh, um, about six weeks ago. We've been going through and we are pretty much finished up our draft report, so I wanted to, to kind of produce an update on that today. Um, our draft report, um, we're going to be sharing that with Maine Water over the next couple of weeks. Um, it is important that where Maine Water is the operator, they have technical expertise in operations. We want to make sure that they have an opportunity to review our work, make comments, and be part of the process that we build towards as part of a capital improvement plan. As far as the pilot results, and just to take a step back, what we were looking at with the pilot test is selecting a technology to improve the water quality prior to the filter process. We heard tonight that the filters got plugged up because of long-term impact of manganese and other water quality related issues. The existing clarification process is not resilient enough to provide adequate treatment ahead of those filters. So the process we, we tested um, it basically was all positive. Um, it basically hit all the benchmarks we were looking for in terms of improving um, organic removal, iron removal, and manganese removal. So we're very positive about it. And across the board, all the different chemistries we tested with this process outperformed the existing um, treatment clarifier. So just as a comparison, uh, on the best pilot trial that we piloted, uh, we got 70% removal of the organic carbon which is the color you see in the, in the water, um, the brown color. In comparison to the existing treatment clarifier, that produces about 32% removal. So we more than doubled the performance there. As far as the iron removal, um, with the pretreatment process that we piloted, we're up around 80% uh, compared to about 62% for the existing treatment process. And for the manganese, which is the big one here, um, we got 40, 43% removal of the manganese with a pilot test compared to about 11% for the existing treatment process. Now, the one thing with the manganese, we can do much better with the removal at a full-scale design because with the manganese, you've to, you to, you got to add some chemistry to oxidize it to be able to take it out with the process. We weren't able to do that with a pilot test because it's, it's hard to do on a small scale. But the science about manganese uh, pre-oxidation as part of this process um, is well established and Summersworth is using it. So we, we intend to, uh, at a full scale design and part of our preliminary design, show that uh, the manganese removal can be enhanced uh, with this process with chemistry. So that's uh, all positive with the pilot results. So now we're building upon the, with the preliminary design of a large capital project with implementation of this upgrade might look like. So that's in progress. Now that Maine Water's at the table as the operator, again, it's an opportunity for, 
a right peers in the town to work collaboratively with Maine Water so they can help us vet the, the treatment process from an operation standpoint. Some of the questions that we need to answer as a group, uh, basic site layout and conceptual integration of the existing plant. Our goal is to retain the existing filters and the basic infrastructure of the plant, but upgrade the pretreatment process and some of the other uh, deficiencies that have been identified um, as we've learned more about the facility. Operational cost, we're going to improve treatment, but there's a cost to improve treatment in terms of more chemistry and those sorts of things, electrical costs. So we're going to be quantifying that as part of our analysis. And then we're going to be updating the, um, the capital cost to do a, a large pretreatment upgrade and compare that to the available funding as part of our process. And the other big issue with the existing plant, obviously, is the waste handling operation with those bags that are out there, the filter bags. Uh, part of this process, you know, to treat the water, we're going to be generating more sludge that we have to manage on site. We're going to come up with a different strategy to do that, which we hope will be um, more sanitary and operational friendly for both Maine Water and the town and cost. With the pretreatment process, we will see longer filter run times because we're going to be taking, taking out those impurities in the water that are plugging up the filters prematurely. So as part of our operational analysis, we're going to be looking at, you know, you know, if we save filter backwash water, that's going to have less wastewater in the system. We're going to generate more sludge. So we're going to be going through the operations. You know, are we, we're adding chemistry over here and adding some costs over here, but we're saving costs on the wastewater side of things. So part of our analysis is to kind of do a cost-benefit analysis so we understand exactly, you know, what the outcome of the upgrade is going to be long-term from an operations standpoint. So with the, with, the, with the recent hurdles that you all heard about with the filters and main water uh, being able to stabilize things at the plant, we discovered that Mike alluded to that the manganese over time is, is really compromised the existing plant, um, which is revealed in the last couple months. So we know that we want to preserve the existing filters in the existing under drain system with the pretreatment upgrade, but we feel like it would be a benefit to do a smaller capital project now to address some of the low hanging fruit deficiencies that were revealed with the filters in a blower that failed. And, um, and get that bid package um, approved by the drinking water program. It would be covered by the bond and get that out to bid here. I'm, I'm shooting for towards the end of June so we can get a contractor on board and get materials ordered so hopefully we can get the under drains upgraded, new filter media, new blowers, um, the core pieces of equipment that basically failed the last couple months that main water had to shore up. So that's kind of our plan moving forward. Um, that's going to allow us to, to basically start the upgrade process this year um, with, the, with the filters while we continue to work with Maine Water and the town to develop the bigger pretreatment project, um, which would be the part of the bigger upgrade. But as a starting point, we want to try to, you know, stabilize the plant. Um, get good operations here in the interim until we have time to, to get the pretreatment process online. So much more to come on that, but I think um, to this point everything's positive in terms of coming up with a technical solution here to address the, the water quality issue. And I think we've got, we got a path forward and I think we're going in the right direction. So with that, I'll pause and take any questions. <coughs> What is the uh, cost of this uh, new capital project? Uh, the filter project? Yeah. Um, all, all I have right now is a quote for the equipment for the filter under drains and the media um, and the blowers. It's about 180000 for the materials. Um, we still have to put uh, bid documents together for a contractor to actually do the installation of the equipment. The other part of the scope is that um, the the raw water pumps and the finished water pumps are, are the original equipment from 1998. There was one new, new, new raw water pump purchase um, and a new finished water pump purchase. Uh, they're sitting on the floor. They haven't been installed yet. So what we'd like to do is this bid package to include installing those pumps that were previously purchased, but also replace the, the other two pumps that haven't been uh, re replaced or rehabbed. 
So the pumps would be the other major list, and that would allow have new pumps, raw water, finished water pumps. The backwash pumps were replaced a couple of years ago, so those are new. In the blowers, um, we found that there's only two blowers, and actually there's no redundancy because you need two blowers to do a filter uh, backwash properly according to the design operations. When the one blower went down, when this process started um, with the clogged filters, it just exacerbated the compromising of the facility. So our strategy is to replace the two blowers in kind, but also mm -hmm. add a third blower uh, to the design. And with this initial contract, we may just include the third blower as a purchase, have it sit, sitting there and as part of the bigger project, um, because we need to create some space down in, the, in that pipe gallery um, to accommodate the third blower piped into the piping system. So we're still working through those details, and I'll be communicating with, uh, with Maine Water, and they'll be reviewing our plans and specs, um, as well as the drinking water program. There's enough money in the bond to, to cover all that and the, the rest of the upgrade? We don't know yet as far as the rest of the upgrade. Um, as you know, the last two or three years since that, uh, that funding was estimated, there's been a lot of cost, cost inflation with materials and labor and that so forth. So. That's part of the reason why I want to, you know, go through the preliminary design process, update the cost estimates, make sure we get alignment from main water, as um, you know, we want to make sure we have general alignment that we're, you know, we're we're addressing the issue from an economic standpoint that we're not doing anything extra that we don't need to do, but long-term operations is the key. So my goal is to kind of quantify that for you and have a separate presentation where we can present that to you and then understand, okay, do we have a gap? If we have a gap, what is the gap? Um, and what are the implications of that? Any other questions? No, I think Dan answered. You had what I had, so. <laughs> yeah, first. Just say, if any of you folks ever want to walk through that place and physically look at each of the things you're talking about, I can do that with you anytime you want. Yeah. Okay. And, and and I, and I think there's going to be some prior, prioritization as we move forward, and I've spoken to James about this. Obviously, the pretreatment um, is, is the high priority. Um, and now that we know that the, the filters are compromised and the end of drains, obviously that's a high priority as well. There's other things that, we, that really need to be updated in the plant, you know, things that we've identified, like the chemical feed systems, the ventilation system in the plant. But those are things that we can kind of kind of parse out um, if it becomes a budget issue, we can prioritize things. So my goal is to kind of, you know, make a list, you know, here are the priority things, here's the cost, here's our available funding, what is the gap, and then have a communication with you folks, okay, you know, these are things that we may be able to, you know, defer for a while, um, and this is the reason why. Um, so that's kind of my approach, is to try to provide guidance and information and prioritize um, and also factor in the, the budget limitations, the capital costs to the, to the customers, but also thinking about the long-term operational costs uh, for the town in, in Main Water. Thank you very much. I right. appreciate it. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Just want to say thank you for Maine Water for all everything you've done. You guys have really done a lot for us. Thank you very much. Yeah, no, we're and and the the board and the town and and, and honestly the the customers as well have been great to work with. So appreciate it. And it's great to see the the trucks out there all the time doing the doing what they're supposed to do. You know, it's it's all very helpful. You know, um, but yeah, we're, we're we're pretty happy so far. Thank you for having us. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. We'll see you in about six months. All right, sounds great. <laughs>